Okay. Bring your own yeah. bag. So we're going to start then, Mrs. Dora. I know you worked in a lot of cinemas um, in Waterford. And uh, would you tell us about some of the cinemas that you were in and what they were like? Well, I was in the Theatre Isle first when I was 18. And um, when the Theatre Isle closed after two or three years, I went to England and uh, Matty Barry wrote to me, the manager, and brought me home for the opening of this cinema, the Regina, that was then, that's 1957, High Society. And there was a queue up past Patrick Street, the whole way up, because there weren't televisions, you know, just that. But um, I worked part-time holiday relief in the Rex in Tremor, the Ritz in Uros, the Rialto in Wexford, oh. and um, back then to the one here, um, I was a sister manager as to Phil Kyle. She only died recently. And um, I was three years here before I got married. But it was always a big queue. And the price of one and four and one and eight in the theatre aisle years ago. And four pence up in the gods, you know, four pence. And what were the gods like? Pardon? What were the gods like? Well, it was more or less they were sitting on the floor, <laughs> you know. There was no seats, just um, steps. And um, that was, you go in the way to Flaggy Lane. I was in the little office inside the door in Flaggy Lane. But, um, it was lovely then. There was um, shows on, mostly then films, Jack Rios and I knew McMaster and all the ones uh, for the children going to the leave desert. And uh, then they'd go back to the films again. But it wasn't regular, like, you know. Mm -hmm. But it was always um, pantomimes and concerts for the Manchester Martyrs. We did it every year in the theatre aisle, you know. And what about the Regal? What was that? Pardon? Like? What about the Regal? What was well, the Regal only there? did films yeah. then. That was later. And um, no, there was only afternoon and evening. There was no continuous like there was here in the Regina, mm. you know. Yeah. And there was big stuff here because about there were four men and there was about six usherettes and two in the shop. And in the office then, myself and Phil and Martin Breen and Mr. Barry up in the office. And uh, I got married out of it here then. That was 1969, 59 rather, 1959, I got married. And then when the girls were in the college, the four of them, I came back and I worked here part time for about 10 years doing every type of work in the cinema for all their instruments. So they were good to me to take me back, you know. Mm. For and when the Regina opened in 1957, what kind of a building was it? Was it very different to the other cinemas? What kind of pan? A building. What was it like, the new Regina in 1957? Well, it was much smaller than this, you know. Yeah. There wasn't the zoom lenses or anything. It was, you see, nobody had television then. And there'd be always a big queue coming into pictures. Right. And so when we had Greece for about two weeks, there were queues, you know. Yeah. And what, what, was, what was in the front part of, of the Regina and then the piece behind? And was there a balcony? There was a balcony. Yeah. And a, at the side of the balcony, there was a restaurant. Right. And it was a lovely restaurant, you know. Yeah. And um, it didn't last that long, but... Then the, tellers, the televisions came and then it dwindled different forms. Half the staff wasn't here then. Yeah. And uh, it was completely different when I came back after I was married right. to um, when I was before. But, um, and what was the cheapest seat there? Pardon? The, what was the cheapest seat in the Regina? In the Regina, uh, one and four. And what was that like? In the front of the screen and then behind will be one and eight, and upstairs was the dearest. I can't remember now, and I was doing much. 
at the time with them. Yeah. But, um, and what was the difference between them, would you say? Pardon? What was the difference between the different sections? Well, you'd be best back and up to high is better for you'd be looking straight, but down in the cheaper one, you'd be looking up and you'd be under the screen. Yes. yes but yes. we used to get a lot and in. Were they all soft seats or? Oh yeah, always the soft seats. Parts. Yeah, always. Yeah. But the Royal was really a joy the theatre. All the shows. Yeah. All the dramatics, you know, everyone. We got to know all of them backstage mm -hmm. and some of them would have a pain or a chill out and they still have to go on, you'd be back with them. Yeah. yeah. So And what what films were really popular then? Um The Folly and Ups they call them the Oh, I forgot about Miss Kerr's one in the oh. Coliseum. A cheese crushed two or three children in one seat. Just for the folly and ups and Hopalon Casty and um, Ry Rogers, Buster Keaton, all them were the ones then. Mostly cowboys, right. you know. And why did they call them folly and ups? Pardon? Why did they call them follow ups? Because you'd see half of it one week and you'd see the other half the next week. They were long films right. and they'd be there too long, you know. So they had the second half then the folly and up. You know, yes, yes. after to get to the end of the story. Yes. Sure, the, the nice with all children in seats and Miss Kerr. <laughs> sure, the mind, Nolan wrote from Red Kettle about her, but she was really an idol, you know. Mm -hmm. She was mm -hmm. Miss Kerr. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was she known for? Pardon? What was Miss Kerr known for? She was the manageress. Mm -hmm. And um, she did everything and anything as well, yeah. you know. Yeah. You'd be jack of all trades, but a kind of not master of any, right. but you just dived in to do things when it was to be done, right. you know. Right. Yeah. And how, how would the Coliseum or the Col differ from the other cinemas, would you say? It was kind of um, a lot of tin, big, long timber benches right. in the front again for the children. But um, I think it being so far down on the Scotch Quay, people weren't inclined to go to your far, far you know. Yeah. Yeah. But um, mm. and then and most people then, just, everyone had money to go. Yeah. 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 And how would how would they get that money? Do you think? Hmm? How would they get the money? What if you wanted to go to the cinema and you were young and sure they'd be sell you get a penny back on a bottle right. uh, when you bring it back, or if you bought a comic, you get a penny on that when you bring it back, and um, then there was two hundred and forty pennies in a pound. You get a lot with a penny, mm. you know. Mm. And and the films again, you know, what films do you remember being in the Regina or the different cinemas around? Well, Gone with the Wind was on here, right. and it must have been on three or four weeks, and it was full in queues every night. It was a long film, mm. three hours, you know. Mm. They're not usually that long. And um, there'd be sometimes one would take to you more than another. And they were really the. I loved the musicals. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I always loved the musicals. Oh, Which ones now would you have seen? Hmm? Which ones would you have seen? Oh, you'd be there if you're working even off your back. You'd see pieces of them all, like, ah, right. do you know yeah, that yeah, way? Yeah, yeah. When you wouldn't be um, at one place at a time. Um, but there were lovely cowboy pictures and Jean Autry. And should the nice with all the children went to come on. It was... Um, They'd be cheering them on, is it, and all of that? Would they be cheering them on and oh, yeah. all of that? And when yeah. you'd open the door, there'd be a stampede, you know? I often yeah. saw the survivor. I wasn't left go when I was young. Mm. And when the door is open, you'd be lifted in with the crowd. There were so many there every Saturday, you know, afternoon. Yes, yeah, yeah. Could you name any of the musicals that you saw? Um... Would you have known Nelson Eddy or those kind of things? Or? Um, that was May time, Nelson Eddy and Jeanette MacDonald. Right, 
But my mother loved that one. Yeah. And um, Annie Get Your Gun and most of them were on, yeah. you know? Yeah. Most of them, all in the beginning, like. But they were always the best when musicals to be on, mm. you know? Yeah, good support in Waterford. And what about the stars? Who were the most popular stars at the time, would you say, the film stars? Usher Clark Abel. Yeah. And everyone was mad about Jeanette MacDonald, the main, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, he was really the, the chap, you know, they used to call him the chap. Yeah. And the, the name of the horse. And Lassie was a very good film. Oh, that was lovely. And then Pride and Prejudice and Little Women. They were, you know, the whole lot of them. They were always a different variety, you know. But every Saturday, the children, <laughs> and every Sunday, <laughs> all shouting at the one time, but they loved it. They go to whatever they be on, you know. But they've been playing around and talking. So, and what would you have to do then as the usherette? What? What would you have to do then as the usherette? Well, I wasn't an usherette here. Yeah. And uh, you'd only go in if anyone was sick or to help out. But um, I was on collecting the tickets one day instead of selling them. And this guy came over and he said, do you go with the ticket? No, I said, I'm not the entertainment with the ticket. <laughs> and sure, God love him. He's dead now, Pascal O'Neill, they had a money ball job. Right. But um, to and get a treat, to go to pictures, to be, you know, mm -hmm. wonderful at that. You'd be, the wonder was in everything with the children then, yeah. but now it's different. You know, everything is more uh, all technical, isn't it? Yeah. All that. And when the children would be there now, and some of them might be running around or being noisy or all that, that how, how would you handle that? Just flash the light on them and they go in and sit down. <laughs> you know, they weren't children that answer you back or be bold. Yes. yes do you know? Yeah, yeah. But, um, and what about Robert Taylor? I used to book the seats in the Theatre Royal for the, in the night performance. There used to be any in the day. And um, Jean Murphy married Martin Breen. And, my brother-in-law used to work in Murphy's, where the library is in O'Connell Street. And um, he gave me the money, and I'd book for Martin, Breen and Jean. And uh, when they were going with one another, you know? Yeah, yeah. But um, who used to come into us was Brendan Byer. You'd put a bill in a window then, years ago, what would be on. And they'd get complimentary tickets. And Brendan would be the first in with his brother or sister with the comps, you know. Yeah, yeah. All the people that got comps had bills out in the window. Mm -hmm. That's not the way now, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, mm -hmm. And what were the audiences like then, you know? What kind of people were they? The what house would be full of smoke <laughs> in the night. Yeah. They'd be all smoking, you know. Yeah. And um, no intervals, there used to be. Um, Sure, often now, if you were busy, you'd have to work through without getting your tea. Mm -hmm. With queues outside when they'd be going off in the day to come in in the night, you know? Mm -hmm. To be um, booked out. Mm -hmm. you could, they could come at any time their seats were booked, and the usherettes would have to bring them up to the seats. But now you go into the cinema here, there's no one bringing you. Mm -hmm. You know, no torches. <laughs> Automation. Yeah, so that yeah, was that the way, you know. Yeah. And um, do you think going to the pictures was a really big thing for people oh, at yeah. the time? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Why was that, would you say? If a boy now was going to start a relationship and the first thing they'd say, will you come to the pictures? This was wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at the time we thought that, you know. Yeah. But it would be a big thing yeah. to go. So or the Atlantic like? Ballroom in Tremor or or the one on the mall. It, if you got a bottle of orange, to be wonderful, there were no liquor, alcohol, and uh, this bottle of orange was great in the Olympia, you know? And there used to be, in Lent there were no films, and you go down to Olympia, there was skating on, and uh, to go back then, Easter Saturday, the films would go on, 
after being off for Holy Week. They don't do that now anymore, you know. And what, what would, would it be like to go on a date to the cinema, you know? I'm oh, sure it was a great treat. Yeah, would you get all dressed up and all of that? Pardon? Would you get all dressed up and that kind Oh, God, yeah, yeah. you would. Yeah. All dressed what up. What would you wear? They'd be, they'd be great style there, into fashion at the time. Yeah. And now when my girl just looks at the thing, oh, mammy, the hair does and the difference, you know? Yeah. But that was the fashion then, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we were going to the Beagle Ball, the Hunt Ball, Long dresses. You walked down to the Olympia and you walked home. There were no taxis. There were no cars hardly, you know. Only you'd hire a car for a funeral or a holy communion. But you walked all the beagle balls, own balls, in the long dresses and came home. With them. And if you were going on the date, would the boy collect you at home or would you meet them at the cinema? And oh, they collected the collect door. Yeah. And my dad used to say, don't be bringing them boys around the house. I'll give you the money, go with your brother. I must be the one to go down in history. My brother brought me to my first Beagle Ball and all my friends had boy friends. Yeah. And Sean came, but he was a ballroom dancer at the time and he had a tuxedo and... The whole lot. The whole and all my friends had their boy friends except me. I thought at the time, you know, it was okay. But after, I would laugh when you think of it, mm. you know. But you got plenty afterwards, I'd say then, plenty <laughs> of boy friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and then w when you'd come to the cinema then, you know, would the boy bring you sweets? Would, uh, would, would you have that kind of thing? No. 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 you just go no. in and watch the film. Yeah. But... When I was in England before I came back here, um, there was just the telly came in at the time, mm. 1956, and it was just the BBC, no other program, but no ads. And I thought this was wonderful, but it wasn't really only starting here then in 57, 58, you know, yeah. the black and white telly. Yeah. Then it was wonderful to get a colour telly, mm. you know. Mm. Yeah, that all came in then. And um, do you think there was differences between the audiences in the 50s, say, and the audiences in the 70s? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and what would yeah. those be? They were more themselves, they were more individuals. Years ago, you see, you were trying to be under real with school or religion or at home. But I thought that was kind of gone now, mm. myself, you know. Mm. But then you can't generalise, you know. And then um, the the stars. You were, you were saying to me one time that Robert Taylor was a real big star. What? How did people react to him? Oh, sure. We all thought he was lovely. We loved him, you know. Yeah, yeah. I was going with one fella in the Royal Air Force, and the girl was with me. He was said, "Oh, he's like Robert Taylor," and this was such a. You know, mm. or that's the way they'd be with the one only or maybe, you know. Yeah. But mostly um, Gene Autry and Roy Rogers were the up and common fellas, the cowbells and that. It would be, you know. Yeah. And have you any funny stories you remember or any stories you remember from your time in the cinemas? Well, I have. I was going up to work to the Regal one night and I had the keys and... My friend of mine on the hill said he wanted to lift up. And I said, I do, and I got up to the lane. And he said, we go up the rock. This was a joke. And then I said, listen, look at all the people have the keys. It was only joking. Yeah, but when I went over, the first show said, we thought you were never going to come. And here I was with the keys, and he wanted to bring me off for it being up the rock. Then that was where you went for it being. You know, and all around, up by the hybrid, the people were queued up in the rain to go to the pictures. And do you remember what film that was now, or would that be... Oh, should night? they be several, you know? Yeah, yeah. More or less the cowboys or the musicals or the love stories. I remember Cleopatra, you know? Yeah, yeah. And um, people went, no matter what was on at the time, half the time you wouldn't know, but you go, like, yeah. you know? Yeah. And only for the bills in the window, you wouldn't know what to be on. Mm -hmm. They weren't local, like paper, like now, you know? Yes, yeah, yeah. 
It was different. Would you have people trying to sneak in and get in without paying? Oh, and yeah. Would, and what would happen then? What would they do? It wouldn't be very, I'll tell you now, to be, to be rare enough. Mm. Because um, years ago, the people were more subdued, you know, than they are now. And um, it wasn't very uh, the odd few. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. you know. And what would happen to them? Pardon? What would happen? You just put them out and tend their bard. Yeah, yeah. Should they forget, you would forget, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't be too stern with them. Yeah. You know, yeah. boys and girls will be like that, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. You know? And, and would they ever try to go from, say, the dearer section into the, or from the cheaper section into the dearer section and try to do that? Sometimes, um, yeah, yeah, but it wasn't very much either. Mm -hmm. It was only um, rare occasions. Yeah. But it was very regular to see queues outside the Regal, the Re here, the um, Regina, and the Savoy. And there were old men dressed in uniforms, keeping back the queue, right. you know? Yeah. Tommy Cloney, Billy McBride, and there was Jack Cunningham, and they were in uniforms yeah. now, like what you'd see outside the big hotels, yeah. keeping yeah. The, in the night time. Yeah. And what, what did the doormen in, in the Regina wear, and the usherettes? The doormen in the Regina? They just, I think a dark suit they used to have to wear and a white shirt. Yeah, but yeah. in the Savoy, they had a blue one. The only one that had a different one was the Savoy oh, cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And the usherettes, what was their uniform like? Oh, they always had to have a uniform and a little pillbox. Blue, midnight blue and little pillbox. And um, in the Regal and in the machine, in the... Royal, but here um, it was only the usherettes had uniforms, and the two girls in the shop. All the rest, like the men, didn't have to uh, the operators or anything like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. But, um, and were the films in the Savoy different, say, to the films in other cinemas? It would be, yeah, yeah. they'd have different ones. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you come in to be black and white, another time to be subtitled, but you wouldn't know you come in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the children, like, you know. Yeah, but they'd yeah. sit down watching anything yeah. when they'd be playing and that, you know, yeah. and they'd have a heap of stuff to eat. Yeah. Yeah. They'd be happy then. Yeah. yeah, and do you remember any films that caused any bit of controversy or you know a bit of of complaints or anything like that? With ordinary people complaining, yeah. you'd always get the few would complain, you know. Yeah. But on the whole, really, they were so delighted to go. Oh yes, yeah. it was a real treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Well. And just the last thing, then, do you remember who owned the different cinemas in the in the city? How many cinemas? Do you, do you remember who owned the cinemas? The Odeon? Yeah, no, the cinema, the, the Regina, the Regal. The Savoy, the Coliseum. Yeah, now and who, the Rex and Tremor. Right. And did the same people own all of those? Well, the Breens owned it, the ones I was working in. Mm, yeah. The Ritz, the Rex, the um, Rialto. Mm. And um, then they had a syndicate. But um, when it broke, it was the syndicate in Dublin had it. When I came back in 1956, right. it was um, changed. But I don't know who owned the fire or the Coliseum. I wouldn't know that. Mm, right. And would you say that the films influenced the fashion, what people were wearing and the hairstyles and all of that? Would you say that? Oh, they'd all get their hairs done and the new clothes for the pictures. Yeah. It's like going to a fashion show now. Yeah. But yeah. they'd go and they'd, you know, yeah. they made their self nice, easy. Right. And, and w would they use styles they had seen in the cinema maybe to say, I'd, I'd like my hair like this or I'd like... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But the ashtrays used to be full. Everyone in the night was smoking. The smoke yeah. was absolute. That was the worst part of it. Part, the your clothes would be your hair. Yeah, yeah. 
And you were you were telling me before there was a hairdresser's on the quay. Yes. Um, my he's my sister, my son, my brother-in-law's brother married one of them. Um, John, just before you go to um, the building where the GPO is, right. the feelings, right. two girls, and they married my son-in-law's sister, and they're living in America now. Oh, but that was the only hairdresser around. There weren't many. Yeah. They wouldn't get the business, like. I know. You always did your own hair. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Put in the rags or the roll or the... The yeah. clips or what have you. Yeah. But you always, like, only when you go to Beagle Ball or the Hunt Ball or getting, going to a wedding, you get your hair done. Mm. Yeah. But the women were wonderful women, knitting and sewing, mm. yeah. walking around of a Sunday, a whole heap of prams. Yeah. Now it's all cars, no one walking with prams. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, around the quay after Mass, 12 Mass of a Sunday, you go around the whole quay with the children. And then after dinner, it was the Cork Road, up Paddy Brown's Road, and into my mother-in-law's house in Roanmore. And you think it wouldn't be a big walk. walk yeah. You'd be used to walking. Yeah, you would yeah, yeah. be used to walking. And the children then could go to school and come home. And now they have to get lifts and get back and forth. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. all walk everywhere. And what would you say is 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 the most memory you have of your time in the cinemas? What, when you think of in being in the cinema, what comes into your head most? I, I was very happy in it, you know. Yeah. Although when I went to England, and uh, I was in the engineer's office for the men were all um, architects, mm. and I was just in a little office, type as large types, and I had an old fashioned print op operator, like a big mangle. And um, they couldn't believe the hours that I did when I was working in the cinema. Mm -hmm. And what were those? I hours? was in Manor Isle, APV. And uh, they couldn't believe you do that many hours. Yeah. And what were the hours? Oh, the hours you now. You'd have to come in the morning to do the bank mm -hmm. and come back. The cleaners would be in. And you'd have to go up to the office then and check the films and the pro all the different things wages and um filing, typing, um all around things, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um they couldn't you, I remember in the Royal there was um when the shows had come to concert, you'd never get time to catch your tea, there'd be so many outside coming in trying to put the reserved on tickets on all the seats, be all booked out, yeah. still they queue up, yeah. you know. So you'd start about 10 in the morning, would you? And what time would you finish then about? Well, the 8, eight o'clock was the usual time, yeah. and half 10, the film would be over. But the shows, and the, they were all completely different times. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the operas, the operators, most of the schools fail in the skull and they used to be on. And um, different choirs had come in, but um, it, was, it was had to be refurnished. Right. And uh, it's lovely now. Even last week, was after, you know, we were there for the home, it's strictly come dancing. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's a good while since I was down there. Yeah. But it was lovely. Yeah. Is it very you know? different from what it was like? Pardon? Is it very different from what it was like? Oh, completely, completely. Mm -hmm. Sure, look at the size that screen is. There's a difference, you know? Yeah. And when I came from England, I thought it was a big screen here, which was faster than what we used to have, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And that was in the new regime in 1957. Yeah, high yeah. society. Yeah. Went on for weeks. Mm -hmm. But um, the smoke was the killer. Yeah. I'm delighted they're not now, <laughs> for everyone's sake. Yeah. But nobody was warned then. Yeah, they didn't know. You weren't warned that the cigarettes were bad for you, mm. you know? Mm. Mm. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we finish up that you'd like to say about, about the... Oh, well, it was happy time. times. I was happy in my life. Yeah. And 
I was, they, were, they were very good to me, Matty Parry. He wrote to me when I was in London to come home, you know? Mm -hmm. He used to call me the white swan. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I was very happy in it, yeah. yeah. Why did he call you that, do you know? Pardon? Why did he call you that? They used to make out he gave me um, all the concessions and all the things was going and I'd have to go to uh, different places to relieve for the holidays and yeah. this was what they used to say, you know, and then I'd arrive away and come back yeah. to be over some of them and they'd be older than me. I, I was only 23, yeah. you know. Yeah. When I started first I was only 18. Yeah. Were there any characters who used to come into the cinema? Hmm? Any characters, you know, people who would be regular and would be a bit different or... Well, I'll tell you, with the Borstein, you wouldn't see many really? characters. Yeah, yeah. But it's only in later life you'd have time for that, like. Yeah, it's yeah. all business, it was all go now. Oh, yeah. You know, high tech. <laughs> yeah. they just come in the boards like thunder, yeah. you know. Yeah. And people here, girl, to, between the children and the eyes, just half of them wouldn't see the film. <laughs> You know, it was kind of, God loved them. Yeah. But easy going, you know. I know. Nice. I, know. I enjoyed it a lot. Good. And no regrets looking back. It's lovely to be able to say that. Mm. Thanks very much. Not at all. <laughs> That's great to have that recorded. Thank you Thank very you. much. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah.